This is John from TiggerMotorbikes.com and this is a video to explain how to drive a manual motorbike. Quick disclaimer about myself, everything I know and have learned is through driving low CC motorbikes within Vietnam. Uh, I do not have experience driving high powered machines back home. So this is specific to small bikes within this country. Now most bikes, if it's a Chinese Honda Win, will have four uh, gears. If it's a proper bike, it will have uh, five or six. Uh, down to one up to two, up to three, up to four, and up to five. Neutral is between one and two, so down to one, and then a gentle half click up towards gear two will get you neutral. When you're normally driving along, the bike will naturally skip neutral one straight to two, but it does mean for beginner drivers, neutral can be a bit fiddly to get. Basically, it takes practice. Over on your left hand here, probably the most important thing with the manual motorbike is the clutch. The idea being here, it disengages the engine when you pull it in. So every single time you change gears, the clutch must be coming in. Now if you drive a manual car, everything you know about your left foot, you change to your left hand on the manual motorbike. So if you have a, drive a manual car, you have a good chance of being able to drive a manual motorbike. However, if you do not drive a manual car, you have an awful lot more to learn. So the basic idea is uh, when you're driving and you're changing gears, clutch in, then you go off the gas, change, change gear, and then slowly off the clutch again. So to give you an example, let's get started. When you're learning, you want to be very, very slow when releasing the clutch. You can't really go slow enough. The slower, the better in many ways. Clutch in, down to gear one, slowly off the clutch. Now you can see the bike beginning to move forwards. And then, whoops, I stalled. So that happened because I got to here and then in my fingertips, I released. And that's a very common problem with the new drivers. You must continue to go slowly all the way through your fingertips. So let's try that again. So slowly off the clutch, the bike is moving forwards. This is the biting point now and then continue to go slowly off the clutch and we're now rolling. Now I just did all of that with no gas at all. Not all bikes will do that, but a lot of them will. But the point is you don't need to give any bike a lot of gas. It should be done through your clutch control with your left hand. The slower you release, the better it's gonna be for a new driver. If you are the kind of person who releases too quickly and you apply a lot of gas, you'll find you pop a wheelie that's not what you want to do. So really, really slow on the clutch when you're learning. Can't emphasize that anymore. It's probably the most important thing. So gear one is designed for accelerating quickly uh, with a low top speed. And because of that, it's quite a jumpy gear. Not that nice for driving around. So really, you should be in gear two. Clutch in, off the gas, gear two, slowly off the clutch again. Now gear two is where you want to be really for driving around slowly. Uh, if you watch my left hand here, I am playing with the clutch. Now this is to drive smoothly within gear two. I have to stop here, go back to gear one and I'll, I'll continue with that in a second. But the idea is your clutch control in your left hand and it's really, really important to learn. So once you're clutching off the gas gear two, so it's this idea of controlling the speed of your bike using your left hand. Now in gear two here, I'm driving slowly. I can accelerate quickly. I can brake easily. Basically, I have a lot of control over the motorbike. So now coming up to traffic lights, clutching, braking, down to gear one, I have a choice. I can sit here in gear one and hold the clutch, or I can put it into neutral and let go. Uh, it doesn't matter which one you do. Clutching, down to gear one and slowly off the clutch. You can turn right at red traffic lights here, no worries. So here we go again, clutching off the gas gear two, slowly off the clutch, clutching off the gas gear three, slowly off the clutch, clutching off the gas gear four, and gear five. So now coming up uh, to traffic lights, surely in a right turn, I want to prepare early and get myself back into gear two. Clutch in, braking, down to four, slowly off the clutch. Clutch in, braking, down to three, slowly off the clutch. Clutch in, braking, down to two, slowly off the clutch. Now gear two is where you want to be for going around tight corners. As I said earlier, it's basically where you have 
uh, the most control over the motorbike. Up to three, up to four, and up to five. This time I'm going to be a bit more aggressive and go gear five straight down to gear two. So clutching, braking, down to four, down to three, and down to two, slowly off the clutch. I prepared a little bit late there because of the traffic, but you want to try and be fully in the gear before going around the corner. So up to three, up to four. So when you slow down, you need to be pulling in the clutch, or at the very least thinking about pulling in the clutch. I'm gonna do a small kind of emergency brake here uh, to show you my left hand when I'm emergency stopping. No one's behind me. Uh, so here we go, clutching, braking, down to three, down to two, down to one. So I pulled in the clutch, and that's the situation you can imagine. A dog comes out, uh, or a taxi comes out, that's pretty common here. But you need to be pulling in the clutch, otherwise you find yourself fighting with the gears and the engine, uh, which isn't too helpful. So when you slow down, or you're thinking about slowing down, your clutch should be in your mind as well as your brakes. So now talking about burning out the clutch, this is what happens when you slip the disc. So you can be sort of playing with the clutch like this, I'm in gear two at the moment, and then high acceleration. And what's, what's happening there is the clutch is not engaged properly. So the engine's revving, but the bike is not accelerating. Now if you do that over time, you're gonna burn out the clutch and this will eventually cause the motorbike to not move at all. It will just uh, be dead in the ground. You, you have to replace the clutch, which is relatively expensive depending on the model, usually around 50 to $70. And the other thing that happens is the uh, clutch on your left-hand side here can engage. So if you find your biting point is too far in your fingertips, normally the biting point should be around here. But if it's really far in your fingertips, you have the same situation where when you accelerate, the uh, engine revs up, but the bike doesn't really move forwards. If you have this, uh, you'll eventually uh, break the motorbike and you just need to get this adjusted. It's not common, but it can happen. It's sometimes security guys play with the settings here uh, and it can cause problems for customers. So then the last point I really want to talk about is the idea of gear. So gear one is for uh, accelerating with a low top speed. Gear five is a high top speed, low acceleration. And uh, what we're finding sometimes, the car's not moving very fast, is people are driving around in gear five like this with, and going way too, oh, I actually stalled it, I pushed it so far. And you can hear the bike really struggling in that gear. And people are driving them up hills like this. It doesn't matter how good the motorbike is, if you do that, it is going uh, to break. And I think this is where you need to consider, uh, if you've never driven a manual motorbike, are you someone who's naturally gifted with vehicles or not? Does this concept of gears make any sense? Because it doesn't matter if the bike is, is high quality, if you drive it wrong, it's gonna fall apart on you. And if you're that kind of person, maybe the semi-automatic is better, where you can have gears but no clutch, but it's such a nice learning curve towards driving a manual motorbike. So the Honda Blade really is the safe option. The other thing that people do, even experienced uh, drivers, it's, a, it's, very, it's very strange in my mind, but even people with bikes back home, they come along and they start stamping on the gears like this. I can't really understand why. Now uh, basically, you only need to give it a very gentle tap and the bike will change gear. There is no aggression needed in the gear changes. So if you're having to stamp on the motorbike, you're doing something wrong. Now I think what happens is, I'm just gonna put it in the wrong gear. People come to a stop. For example, I am now in gear five, and I'm thinking, oh, I need to get neutral. So I can change to four, that's okay. But I can't sit here and stamp on it. The bike's not gonna change gears. What you need to do, you release the clutch, change gear. Release the clutch, change gear. Release the clutch, change gear. And then I got neutral. When you get quick at it, you can do it very, very quickly. 
and you can go up and down the gears freely once you learn again clutch control so the other area people struggle with sometimes they can't get neutral once the bike is stationary to get around this problem go up into gear two and as the bike is still moving clutch in and now you can get neutral easily with the bike actually moving it takes practice to get neutral try and prepare early for those situations when you think you're going to want to finish in neutral but again very very gentle uh, with the gear pedal you don't need to be aggressive now if your bike is difficult to get neutral uh, it doesn't mean the bike is broken or rubbish it's actually generally down to the tension of the chain a tight chain will make the gears harder to change to begin with uh, and then also down to the way the clutch is set up so basically this is just a reminder to the people if you're not sure if you can drive a manual seriously consider about the holiday you're embarking on and also realize that a manual motorbike how, no matter how good it's going to be will break if you drive it incorrectly if you're not sure then please select the semi-automatic if you drive a manual car you should be absolutely fine with these mostly i'm talking about people who don't have experience with manual cars so this is john from tickermotorbikes.com quick video about manual motorbikes